Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue my series of videos on partial differential equations. Now in this particular presentation we're going to be interested in the following problem. You've got a second order partial differential equation here known as Laplace's equation and you've got some uh, extra condition known as a boundary condition. So essentially you've got some say two-dimensional set D. Inside that, that set this PDE holds and on the boundary you have this uh, extra condition. Um, this kind of condition here where, you, where you've got the, um, the gradient of the solution dotted with a outward pointing unit normal vector is known as an exterior derivative or a normal derivative. And the, the, the two um, together are called a boundary value problem, or BVP. Now this uh, special condition here is actually known as a Neumann, a Neumann uh, condition. Okay, well, um, I'm going to show you that a necessary condition for this boundary value problem to have a solution is that this uh, line integral involving the um, a g function here must be zero. Okay, so this kind of condition is known as a compatibility condition. Because if this is not satisfied, for example, if this um, line integral is not zero, then the, the problem cannot have a solution. Okay, now just a little bit of um, housekeeping first. This left-hand side is sometimes abbreviated to this Nablus squared U or this delta U. Both books use these kinds of uh, uh, books use these kinds of um, notations for the Laplacian of U. Okay. So we're going to um, prove this, and then I'll show you a little bit about, uh, or give you some some interpretation on um, on what it means. Okay. Now, just before we actually prove it, let's just look at some of the limitations of the actual result. If this is zero. It, does, it tells you nothing about whether, whether or not a solution actually exists to the original problem. Okay, so when I say existence of solutions for the Neumann problem, really I guess the only really useful thing uh, it, for this theorem is to show non-existence. Alright, so if this uh, doesn't hold, then the problem 1011 cannot have a solution. Okay, but if this does hold, well, we don't know. This, this problem might, it might not have a solution. We have to uh, dig a bit deeper. Okay, so let's look at the proof. The proof is going to use Gauss's divergence theorem, just in, in the plane. Okay, so um, Gauss's divergence theorem is the following. Okay, so this is the divergence of a vector field F. And um, again, N is just the unit outward pointing normal vector. Okay, so on the right hand side we've got a, um, a line integral. On the left hand side, in this case, we've got a, uh, uh, a double integral. Okay, all right, so how do we apply it? Well, let, let me show you. Let U be a solution to 10, 11. What I'm going to do is take the original PDE and integrate it over D. Right, we're going to obtain the following. 
I'm just going to use the abbreviated notation here now. Uh, well, if I integrate both sides, on, I'm going to get zero on the on on. Uh, uh, I'll just make that the left hand side. Okay, so now remember the Laplacian can be written as the divergence of the gradient of u. <coughs> okay, so the divergence of the gradient of u. So now, if you compare this with this. What I, want, what I want to do is let this vector field f just be the gradient of u, and then I can get this right-hand side. So let's apply GDT with f equals this. Right. We thus have the following. All right, so um, we want to replace f with this in here. And what is this? Well, from the boundary condition, we know that this is g on the boundary of our set of interests. Okay, and this is what we wanted to come up with. Okay, so let's call this, say, star. All right, and that's the end of the proof. So, pretty easy proof. Now, um, let me just repeat what I said before. Having this equal zero doesn't actually tell us whether or not a solution to the original problem exists or not. If this is if this line integral is non-zero, then we can say, okay, well, the problem is not well posed, okay, uh, in the sense that it doesn't have a solution. Now, how can I interpret uh, twelve in a physical um, setting? Well, the Plus's equation arises when, for example, you're looking at a, a heat equation which is a steady state. In other words, u depends on, say, position x and y only, and not time t. In this case, u sub t or du dt equals zero. So we come up with Laplace's equation. Okay, so suppose u is a steady state temperature within the region d. What does this um, boundary condition represent? Well, this boundary condition represents the flux of energy as heat uh, uh, of energy as heat across the boundary of D. Now, condition twelve states that the net flux across the boundary must be zero to maintain a steady state temperature. Okay, uh, if it wasn't zero, then the the um, the heat would change with time, so it wouldn't be a steady state uh, situation. Okay, so. Let me give you an example of how to apply this result. Here I've got uh, a rectangle, or actually I guess it's a square, and we're just working in the xy plane here. Okay, and I've got the Plas's equation satisfied in the rectangle, and I've got this uh, exterior or normal derivative on the boundary. And um, the given function g is zero along this edge, zero along this edge, zero along this edge, and it's 3y squared along this edge. Okay, and the question is, does the following problem for that g have a solution? Now, if we're going to apply the following, res the previous result, then the only answer we can give using this this um, idea is the negative answer. We can only we only want to uh, can only use this idea to show that the problem doesn't have a solution. Okay, so keep keep that in mind. All right, so we show that.
this line integral is non-zero and so no solution exists. Okay, well, to compute the line integral over the whole of this uh, sort of edge of the, the field rectangle, you would integrate from there to there, and then there to there, and then there to there, and then there to there. Now over the three sides, the, um, the g function is zero. So that means if I label the sides s1, s2, etc., then I'll get the following. In particular, all of the first three integrals are zero because g is zero on those, on those uh, integrals, uh, on those uh, sides. And the last one on S4 is just 3y squared. Okay, now um, you can, if you want to, parameterize um, this on this line segment, but it's actually not necessary. Okay, what you can do here is think of this curve lying above this little line segment here, and the line integral is just the area between this curve and the line segment. Okay, in, in the plane x equals zero. All right, now, um, so that's a bit of a shortcut for this particular problem. Now, I do have a lot of videos on line integrals, so if you, if you get a more difficult question, then you can parameterize the, the, um, the uh, um, situation and, and use the, the standard techniques. But this, for this example, it's totally not necessary. Okay, so let's, uh, we're integrating from uh, zero to one on the uh, y-axis. The curve in, qu in question is 3y squared. So this integral will reduce to this basic integral that you see in a first course in calculus. So if I integrate that, I'm going to get uh, y cubed. And then if I put in the um, upper and lower limits of integration, you'll get 1. So the line integral is non-zero. And hence, by this uh, result here, the original problem does not have a solution. Okay. All right, so that is uh, an application or uh, an example illustrating how to apply the ideas. A good question here is why is it useful to actually show that certain problems have no solution or are not well posed. Well, if we're modeling a certain physical phenomena through say, a boundary value problem, and we actually um, can show that no solution to our equations exist, well, what this really means is that our model, our, our boundary value problem, is useless because it would not reflect um, the reality of, um, of our observations. So even though this is sort of non-constructive in the sense that you're showing that the original problem is not well posed, it still has some use. Okay, I hope you found this presentation useful and interesting. Please join me for more presentations in the future.